everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Effort of Community Church weekly podcast. A conversation with our pastors and leaders meant to continue encouraging you to know God, know freedom, know purpose, and make a difference. Hey, Effort of Community Church, it's great to be with you once again for our weekly podcast where we take time to go over the week we just had, the services we just yeah. had together, and look ahead to what God is doing and where we're going in the coming weeks. So, Jim, it's great to have you on again. You delivered a, the message this past weekend. Wonderful. Give yourself a rating out of 100, let's say, where would you put yourself as far as different categories? One, how you felt delivering it. Two, did Jesus you deliver? Jesus loves me. Jesus, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Jesus loves me scale. Next one, please. Uh, and then uh, how well you felt the community responded to yeah. it. Jesus loves them. Uh, yeah. as, a, as, a, as a communicator, yeah. you can have varying degrees of, I was carrying it, and then I delivered exactly what I was carrying versus um, I don't feel like I delivered it at all, but yet people responded. Fun, so fun. I'd love for, you know, the slate is clear. What would you want to talk about as oh, a relationship? That's message? so beautiful. What a fun way to break out because I think Matt's revealing something. For those of us who have ministries, it would be like front of house ministries. Mm-hmm. And by the way, we all have such amazing ministries, right? I just want to recognize that. And even the little fun thing I did where Jesus spent 30 years where his chief ministry was his family, right? Mm-hmm. There's all, for, but for those of us front of house, we sometimes talk about when we deliver a message, what goes on. And I'll have to tell you that possibly, oh, possibly. One, possi- possibly at <laughs> one out of every five messages, it is so given to you by the Holy Spirit that mm-hmm. you just chuckle that it's yours not to screw up. Sure. Now, you might sit and think, well, what do you mean? The Holy Spirit's not in the other four? Yep. Well, no, the Holy Spirit, just like with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, dances with your particular skills, insights, etc., to create a message. But there's yeah. occasionally one where he is so obviously wanted to do something. And I, yep. I told several people that this was one of those where I barely had to work on it. It began to percolate about a month ago, and yep. I so clearly knew that it was being a message that built on what God was doing and certain other messages right. that the Holy Spirit was going to do something. So I even gave some people a heads up um, even before I completely pulled the message together and said, hey, I, I really think the Spirit's going to be ministering mm-hmm. uh, to, to, to people who are making consecrated yeah. motions toward Him. Yeah. So that's a fancy way of saying I think there's going to be a, a Holy Spirit ministry time based on consecration that day. And so I have to tell you, like, truthfully, man, I feel really good about how the message came together, mm-hmm. and it was just mine to deliver it, not build it. Sure. And um, I can tell you that was part of it. I probably spent less time on a message that some people are saying was more profound than one of my usual ones. And I just chuckle at someone like, yeah. that's only the Lord, man. Yeah, and you're getting some charismatic responses back. Like, I know, I got fire. <laughs> Uh, I can't tell her, but Melissa wrote and said, fire. Yeah. And I'm like, what's fire? <laughs> you're still learning about you compliments preached, in the charismatic yeah, speaking of the church. You preached fire. That's definitely a compliment <laughs> in this church, for sure. Oh. Um, so, obviously, there was a number of points from yeah. your message. Um, and, of course, each person is going to walk away with something different. I have a few personal experiences from your word, but I wanted to open up to you as well. Uh, what point did you carrying uh, into this message. There's a lot of points you use to kind of set up mm-hmm. more of that climactic point. Yeah, I do. Um, and so I would love to hear from you. What did you feel the Holy Spirit most, and this is maybe not the best way to say it, but maybe anticipation that God really wants to communicate this truth yeah. to, the, to His people this weekend. Well, there is one that as I was receiving it, I was most excited about. But I even felt the Spirit remind me there's one that don't rush past in my excitement for the main one. So the main one that got me was that this is not a story of Jesus being tempted. This is not a story of Jesus proving supremacy. Those were established things like Jesus. Jesus was set in his being. Jesus was supreme. But Jesus was showing humanness ability to reclaim authority from the enemy. Uh, I think that was all over the story. So that was the point that I think some of us were reminded of in the room that our authority is there to be reclaimed. And therefore, there's a sadness side of that revelation. Many of us still have uh, abandoned authority, and darkness will pick it up. Someone's going to carry authority in this world, right? Authority doesn't lay dormant. It is authority. Um, And it's ours to be reclaimed, and Jesus showed us how. I got excited about that. Now, I'll pause there because you might be excited about that. But there was a point that the Holy Spirit reminded me, sit down and minister to those who are still confused about certain things that's going on in their lives. That whole image of, 
and Jesus was led by the Spirit yeah. into the wilderness to be yeah. tempted. That is a hard truth around the fact that God yeah. allows things and sometimes authors things in our lives that aren't always comfortable. Right? Mm -hmm. You do, did something this past week um, which is so healthy. Uh, what is healthy isn't always enjoyable, yeah. um, but it's healthy. And, and, and the human experience being filled with um, just difficulty. Mm -hmm. And confusion. Almost. Confusion, yeah. hopefulness, this unmet expectations, God's word promises this, but my experience has mm -hmm. given me this. Um, and so you stood up there and towards the beginning shared, God doesn't answer questions sometimes. Because you had the, the Greek way of thinking That's right, the Greek and the way Hebrew way of the thinking. Hebrew, yeah. And I love that, again, I, I love how you present that to people because it helps people shelve their experience appropriately mm -hmm. to say, wow, the God that I'm relating to is a God that doesn't necessarily feel the pressure to have to right. explain everything. He doesn't answer every question, but he's good. Because right. uh, you mentioned C.S. Lewis as well. You know, no, he's, he's not, not a tame, team, but he is good. good. Right. Um, and so I, I would love for you to speak to that a little further, just candidly, whatever comes to your mind to, to share more of the heart behind that, but I felt it so helpful because a person who might been might have been carrying that question into the morning mm -hmm. was then met with the reality that um, God led Jesus into the wilderness, and we don't know why. We don't know the full under we don't have full understanding as to the why behind right. it, and it's okay. That's right. And I feel like that helps people to say, you know what, that's where I can shelf this question. Yeah. Yeah, I think the thing that I'm worried about in the world, and I'll speak to the negative first so I can build to the positive, is I believe there's an, an idol of certainty that um, we all want. We sure. want to be certain about certain things. I think it's part of our own attachment realities uh, where we want to make sure every relationship is going to guarantee me this out of it. Right. Or, or every, it's almost like we're reducing relationship to transactional versus transformational yeah. lives. Where in truly transformational relationships, you're, you're promised characters, traits like goodness and faithfulness, right. but a whole lot of craziness can happen with your promise, right. goodness and faithfulness. The virtues remain. Exactly, and they constant. do. And then therefore you're able to understand something I might do to Rachel through, I, that hurt, but I know who that man is. Right. Or you hurt me, Rachel, but I know who you are. Right. Man, that is, mm -hmm. that is the deeper life of relationship. And yeah. I think so that is the core of what I think God delights in trust. When God is trusted, I actually think God experiences delight because yeah. he's so aware of there's so many ambiguities and right. scary things in life. But when you still trust, it's worship. I oftentimes say trust yep. is worship. Trust is worship. Right? And, and, and so that's the point that I was getting at there and that little thing that Athanasius reminds us like, you can know God. You just can't always know what God is doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Um, because that's, that can fall without, you know, looking into that tube. You can see God but you can't determine if, uh, exactly what's going up here right. or down here. So right. some of us have faced adversities, right? Mm -hmm. And still have questions. There's some people I know in this community that are believing for actual promises from God, right. and they're still in the thin place yeah. or in the wilderness leading toward that promise. Right. And I just think the Lord wanted to remind us, like, I am in the wilderness right. with you, although you're going to be experiencing differently there in a yeah. wonderful book called Severe Mercy. There are these mm -hmm. severe mercies. Um, and it, there are moments where they feel more severe than mercy, <laughs> sure. but they are nevertheless severe mercies. You'll get me started on this, man. That's well, it's so te it's so connected to everybody's experience in yeah. life, um, and and I feel I want you to provide a place. Shelf. I love that sh shelf that you say. Sure, man, to have a shelf for something. Right. I don't even care if God answers it right now, but if I could just place it safely on a shelf, that's a God shelf. Mm -hmm. um, and you use, you use that phrase a lot, like, I have a shelf for it that. It helps, right? yeah, it's just the, the, the metaphorical picture that helps me give language to it. But when you provide a place for a person to interact with what's their felt experience, mm. it's there, whether or not they're talking about it, it's there. But this conversation you began through the teaching brings it to the surface, right? And then you lead people on a journey of how do they navigate what has just been surfaced, and then you end it with this consecration call. Oh, dude. And, and so 
I guess I could say it was it was beautiful to observe a community, a, a room, over a thousand people on Sunday mm -hmm. there, hear the word and then have such a profound response oh. to the invitation to a consecrated, fasted lifestyle. Mm -hmm. The the say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm going to believe in faith again that I can reclaim through the you know, the Holy Spirit can mm -hmm. sorry, the, the language around authority, reclaiming That's authority, right? right? And, and how Jesus displayed, you can you can walk in the authority, you can That's reclaim right. that. Yeah. Um, I think it was it was masterful um, as far as um, the whole point of why we're communicating at all is that it's people that. hearts are yeah. tethered to Jesus and His promises and, and where and He's leading His people. And Go and ahead. The Holy Spirit couples with that. I just want to share two examples, getting really practical. Of two people I've prayed for afterwards. Sure. Uh, one man was there because he was reconsecrating himself to trusting God amidst his father's leukemia. Mm. And so I went over to pray for him, you know, and I was going to do a spontaneous prayer. Immediately felt the Lord say to me, ask him what he's here for prayer for. Um, and he said, I'm here because my father is suffering from leukemia and I want to be able to be fully present and to walk and believe God for whatever God wants to do in this. Right. So you're, uh, here's a man who using the example we just talked about, he doesn't know exactly what God's doing in that. He doesn't know if his father is going to be healed. He doesn't sure. understand the divine longitudinal wisdom of God in the midst of that. But he was there to say to God, God, I will trust you. Mm -hmm. Man, a consecrated life of trust. And yet another guy I'm praying for was clearly responding to, my lifestyle is not one unto everything God's called me to do. And he was there with full revelation that he was living a thin version of a calling that was on his life, and he was coming back to a fasted life onto being reminded of a calling. Yeah. And I'm like, isn't it beautiful you yeah. get those two kind of responses? Because yeah. that's what the Spirit can do across yeah. a thousand or 1,800 people. And, and those are just the ones we know that responded. I got, I got Facebook messages from people throughout the day that I didn't see in the, quote, upfront response, but clearly something was working on. I had, a, yeah. I had someone on the worship team tell me, I am sitting and listening to it again because I've heard the Spirit every time it was presented. I'm gonna, and if the Spirit wants to keep doing it, I'm going to listen to it again. Wow. And isn't that beautiful when the yeah. Spirit can pull back different parts and keep showing us? Yeah. Uh, it, it, I, I, first of all, I just love this community's availability. At the staff puddle this morning, we went around and said something you're thankful for. We are an available people, yeah. right? Um, and that means a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> isn't it fun to help lead that. <laughs> yeah, and, and be part of it along with the whole. You know, it's like I'm right there with everybody and just yeah. heart moved by just who Jesus is and the invitation to be everything he created you to be. Yeah. Like that's what it's all unto. Oh. You know, Romans eight twenty nine, conform to the image of Christ. It's all unto that. And so this this appeal, this Holy Spirit empowered appeal to come, mm -hmm. be led of the Spirit, even if it's into a wilderness place, mm -hmm. so that you can walk in the authority, the calling, the purpose, the identity of who Jesus dreamed you to be mm -hmm. when He created you. Uh, and man, it's no surprise you watch people say, "I'll sign up for that. Right. I'll go to the front for that," because you're you're speaking to the core DNA of of, of what God wrote into that person, right. uh, and that is a message that I love being behind that message. Yeah, can I throw out, but, but, Matt, every time I talk with you, it makes me happy, like you stir things in me. Um, here's another thing. Notice I didn't talk a lot about sin this weekend. Mm -hmm. I talked about misalignment. I talked about forfeiting your authority. Right. And believe me, there was a moment when I was preparing this message where I'm like, wow, do I need to call out sin harder? And and I remember the Spirit reminding me, like, I need you to speak what I'm asking you to speak. Because mm -hmm. isn't the Spirit gracious to us? Yeah. Like, people were confessing sins. Yeah. I was there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? They were confessing sins unto the thin version of themselves they know uh, they were living compared to what Jesus had for them. They were responding to the love of Jesus, looking at them as a prodigal, saying, hey, I know you want to live in the barn. Nope. <laughs> Here's your robes. Yeah. Here's your rings of authority. I believe in you. Yeah. It, it, there was a spirit of what God had for us, not just what we have done wrong that was there this weekend. Yeah. And I don't know about you, I can respond to both. I mean, I was raised in the holiness team. I know what it means to respond unto uh, sin. <laughs> um, but there was also this sweetness there of, 
I'm asking you to respond to joining me in winning back this world from the kingdom. Excuse me, I'm going to call it the kingdom of darkness. From darkness. Yeah. That was what I was seeing in people. And that makes me happy because that's declaring the favorable year of the Lord. Right. Not just the day of the vengeance of our God, right? Yeah. And it's fun. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Earlier today, you and I were in the staff kitchen and there was a conversation we had and you had this phrase. Yeah. I don't remember the phrases. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll share with you again. Um, but I want to, I want to, I want you to speak to it because when you shared it, my response was like, oh, I've heard you say it before. I'm like, I just love, well, sometimes we have things that we, God taught us in seasons past. And then you just share out of like, oh yeah, here's what I know to be true. And other people hear it and they're like, oh my word, I've never, I need to hear that again. And so you shared one of those things today. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, let me set it up. Let it was so profound up. to me. I can't recall it at all. So go ahead. I was one of three <laughs> messages in a row called Make Way, and we were asking people, make a place for God in your life. Right. This particular week, it was a call to consecration, and it was a call to be consecrated to receive authority back that mm -hmm. you've lost. But some people could look at it and go, well, what can we really do? Is it works to be doing this? And okay. I just want to remind people, and this was the phrase, Dallas yeah. Willard said it, yeah. grace is not opposed to effort, it's opposed to earning it. Yeah. Right. And what we are doing in these three weeks is we were calling people to the effort of responding to who they were meant to be in yeah. Jesus. And it's not works. Yeah. It is effort that grace is willing to receive. We can't earn it. We're thrilled God made a way. Yeah. But we can apply ourselves. Right. And Jesus showed us in that wilderness, I will show you ways to win back who you were meant to be in this right. world. That gets me pumped. Yeah, no, I love that. He's not opposed to effort. He's opposed to earning. Yeah. Um, and man, I know people are having a hard time sometimes um, reconciling it you, you receive it not by works but by what Christ provided his provision um, and then yet what do I do just sit on the couch all day and he performs like there is works that I need to be doing how do I do that um, and so inviting people into that here's my yes I say yes to you Jesus here's my heart before you and and really that's that's what God that's what we have to provide him. He does all the work and our oh, weakness and strength is made perfect. Such a powerful point hmm. to speak to a church, to, to, to the church. Um, there's authority that has been through the covenant of his blood is for the church to walk in. Mm -hmm. And we're calling the church into that authority, mm -hmm. to walking in that. And to me, I'm thinking, wow, that's when the name of Jesus manifests in a culture. Uh, in a region when the church is manifesting his name. John seventeen six, Jesus said, um, I have manifested your name. He's mm -hmm. praying to the Father. And I'm like, man, Lord, I want to manifest be, your name. And it's for the church to do it. Right. Uh, and what does that look like? It says, consecration, here am I. And Lord, I want to I want to walk in the authority that you made available. And our lead pastor is constantly reminding us, we are asking the Lord to put his name on it. Yes. Right. Yeah. If his name was on us, and whatever that means, I barely understand what it means to fully have the name of name of God, the name of Jesus on I want it. I want it, man. That's and good. I love that verse. I've manifested. Yeah, name. John seventeen oh. six. I'm gonna be thinking I'm gonna reflect on, on it. Oh yeah. It's a good name. Uh, uh, let me can I end with one little thing? Uh no, our time is up. We gotta No, go. come Sorry, on, let go me ahead. do this. And then I'll let you do the end end. <laughs> um I, I did I did wanna I did say something, I think it was on Sunday, and I just want to repeat it to everyone. I believe there's a grace on the fasted life right now. Mm -hmm. And for one week, I'd like all of us to consider one thing. I don't care if it's the fasted life of, I will pray every day this week for my children. It, it could be food related. I will fast um, um, lunches this week unto. But mm -hmm. I believe we will get a glimpse into a feast on the other side of fasting, yep. and it's particularly around authority, yeah. that, the, that we are living in diminished versions of authority. Um, and, and so would you, would you consider something this week? And by the way, I'm even afraid to, to even make the list because I don't even wanna, I don't wanna presuppose exactly what a week-long fast looks like, but would you consider a, a, a level of consecration? Yeah. I think we're gonna see something. Yeah, the prayer, Lord, what would you have me fast? Yeah. If, if, you pro, if you posture yourself with a, I want the authority you've promised, and I recognize fasting as a means to walk in that authority, Lord, what would you have me fast? 
because we don't want people doing things out of works. That's right. Like I'm gonna do a hundred days and never eat food. You know, I'm like, you know what? Just do what the spirits no, ask yes. you to do. You're gonna find life in it. Right. right. And yeah. it's not about sacrifice. It's yeah. about obedience. Oh man. Dude. And and you're not gonna earn anything by saying, but God, I did this for a hundred days. He's like, and actually, you'll read this in Isaiah 58. In the day of your fast, and this was his rebuke to the people, why have we fasted and you have not noticed? And he says, in the day of your fast, you still find your desire. Mm. Uh, and the reality is the Lord is looking at that thing. Can you lay that down? And it might be an hour's worth of TV every evening and said, instead of watching TV at night, I just want you to pray. Eat all the food you want. That's right. uh, it's, it's not about this big sacrifice. It's about laying down the one thing the Lord puts his finger on. That's right. And that's where you die to yourself and Jesus resurrects in yep. you, you know. And where I'm being a little weird now, and I submit this to some of the other leaders here, is sometimes we fast unto something, uh, blessing God, unto discernment we're in. This is unto authority. Mm -hmm. I actually believe we as a community will have authority released. Not just you. Not, I'm not guaranteeing for the individual. I'm sure. saying something that uh, there will be a, something corporately released in authority. Yep. Now, we're about to scare the kingdom of darkness uh, because I'm telling you, it is one thing that does not want to give back. But I will remind you in the end of this passage, the one time Jesus dropped the hammer in the wilderness was when the enemy tried to give away something that it stole. Mm -hmm. When the enemy tried to give away authority to Jesus, if it, he, Jesus would bow, Jesus reminded, I do not take stolen authority. As a matter of fact, I'm coming to take it back and giving it to the people who want it. I love it. Hope it's us. Thanks for sharing the word this weekend. Who's up this coming weekend? Kevin. Kevin. Who we love. What? Kevin's up. <laughs> Kevin. What is he? Do you know the topic, uh, the theme? Uh, we're still on make way. Okay. Preparation. So okay. he's picking up. Uh, I think it's the choosing. Of, of the 12. Yep. Because that's a big deal when you choose the community that you're going to journey with, right? Yeah. These are the ones he was going to pour in. It's still making a way. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Jim, again, and thanks for tuning in this week. We look forward to connecting with you this weekend at our services, as well as the podcast next week. Until then, God bless. Hey, thanks again for joining us today. We hope that you've been encouraged by listening and that you'll join us again next week. You can listen to previous episodes, find additional resources, and, of course, learn more about us by visiting effortacommunitychurch.com. Community